Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Another wild turkey product, something which I'm amazed we've never reviewed on the channel. Um, I've been going back through the archives and thinking, what have you guys never seen us do? And for some reason we've never reviewed Wild Turkey 101, which was a true amazement to me because it's one of my favourite whiskies of all time and we've never had the opportunity to talk about it. Um, I, think, I suppose the key thing with this is that it is a whiskey that has been made for in excess, well, just over 60 years. So for six decades, this particular whiskey, with a few different names, has been available to bourbon drinkers and whiskey drinkers mostly around the world. Even though Eddie Russell is the current uh, master distiller and master blender of wild turkey, this has Jimmy's signature on it, who's his father. This is his idea, it's his product. Um, and the embossed phrases on the bottom are the singular words, genuine, bold and true, couldn't ring true more than they do with this product. Um, it's roughly about six years old, it comes in at 109 proof normally, but it's watered down to 101, uh, so 50.5% ABV, um, from a very famous brand of whiskey. Uh, we mentioned their mash bill in the previous video about Wild Turkey Long Branch, but it's 75% corn, 13% uh, rye and 12% malted barley, so a relatively high rye content bourbon compared to things, uh, well I suppose maybe Woodford is maybe the closest one into it in terms of the rye content they put into their product. Um, just a genuinely brilliant whiskey this. You can get this for below £30 a bottle, I think I paid 26 On a bad day you'll only be paying about 32 maybe even with shipping from certain online retailers. Um, I just think it's fantastic and this is the first bottle of it I've maybe bought in a year because I was convinced we've reviewed it but clearly we hadn't. So we brought it here today in its classic fashion with its giant turkey on the label and the 101 being proud all over the place. I'm just going to dive into it, we're going to talk about it, we're going to do our usual thing um, but I'm going to wax lyrical for a bit so just bear with me. But we'll smell it and then we'll move on. I've smelt a lot of bourbon in my life, from £20 a bottle through to a couple of hundred. I've been very privileged to have met Eddie himself a couple of years ago uh, in a bar in Manchester. Talked to him about proprietary yeast strains and all these kind of really nerdy things that no one really wants to talk about. As a smell goes, if you're not a fan of bourbon, you're probably not going to like this in general, but as, as far as just the most indulgent smell in the world goes, I honestly think this is things like Glendronic 18 just beat. Because I know Glendronic 18 is this cherry, walnut, sherry bonanza, but this thing is just the densest, thickest, most ridiculous smell on the planet. The thing it always reminds me of, and in Manchester every year, along with many of the cities in England, we have a Christmas market, and it like overtakes the entire city in numerous different areas. And you can buy Stroop waffles, which are these really thin waffles with like caramel in them, and you put them on top of coffee and hot chocolate and they melt and they smell incredible. This thing just smells like that. It's loads of caramel, it's loads of kind of sweet waffle, um, really kind of nice milky coffee, tons of cane sugar and brown sugar. It's just dense and thick and wonderful and really inviting at the same time. With such a high rye content, you do get that mintiness. Um, unusually, I'm actually not a fan of their rye whiskey, just their straight rye, be it the standard or the 101, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, but that little bit of mint, that little bit of almost like, you know, refreshing toothpaste kind of smell really does counteract that just ridiculously dense caramel note. But yeah, there's bits of tobacco, um, you know, kind of like freshly rolled tobacco. My dad used to smoke roll-up cigarettes, so it's like a... a uh, a smell which is very kind of prominent for me. And then that's just kind of indulged and wrapped in those big kind of fresh coffee bean, uh, roasted kind of just ridiculous earthy sweet smells. But let's taste it and see where the fun is. I feel like we should probably just title, title this video like the dense review because it is the thickest, chewiest thing. If you think about bourbon in context to something which would equal this in terms of like chewiness, 
things like Booker's, which is anywhere from 10, well, no, this is 20, I paid 26 pounds for this. So Booker's can be about 60 pounds upwards per bottle at cash strength, which is amazing, it's an amazing bourbon. But this does very similar things for a lower price. Um, taste wise, the mint hits first, that really kind of big refreshing rye note, which is not something we say a lot of refreshing rye, but it kind of, it leads the way, it charges, it kind of clears the way for that ultra like super vanilla pod, like Madagascan vanilla ice cream, loads of like Manuka thick honey, those Stroop waffles coming up again, just like really dense layers of caramel, nice kind of sweet brown sugar waffles, rich, indulgent, bitter espresso, uh, just awesome. So well put together. Um, I can only applaud. I think Eddie makes this stuff, but his dad's signature's on it. So you can only really applaud him for replicating something which is so iconic and so comfortable as far as a whiskey goes, both in terms of taste and financially as well. It doesn't damage your wallet. This neat cocktails, highballs, whatever you want to do with it. I only drink it neat because I think it is a pinnacle, it is a, a mainstay, it is a staple which every bourbon fan should have in their cabinet, on them at all times, in some form of hip flasks for good or bad events. 50.5% um, ABV, roughly six years old, extremely indulgent, comfortable smell it almost makes you kind of like it turns your spine into liquid because you just relax into it um sub 30 pounds a bottle most of the time of the year some of you may think i'm a little bit crazy for the score i'm going to give it but i honestly think it's deserving uh, and you can tell how short this video is going to be because it's just to the point it doesn't mess around it sticks to that genuine bold true mainstay which is cemented on the front at the bottom of the bottle i'm going to give it a 10 because I honestly don't think there is any whiskey that is better value um, for the same level of alcohol, for the same flavor experience across all fields. You can sometimes get Bunnahaven 12 for like below 40 pounds a bottle. You can sometimes get Kilkerran 12 for about 35, 37 pounds a bottle. They are fantastic whiskies. But on a par level, if you put all three side by side, I still think this would win for me personally. So I'm going to give it a 10. We gave the original Wild Turkey an 8 many years ago when we shot in the whiskey jar. Well, I mean to go back and visit that video and see what you thought of it. That bottle was actually signed by Eddie after the night we met him. Um, but it gets a 10. 101 gets a 10. Many ones, many zeros. We call it the, the dense binary video. You never know, you might go well with that. Um, but yeah, I think it's incredible. If you've never tried it, purchase a bottle. It doesn't break the bank. It delivers on every single level you can imagine. And it's just fantastic. Uh, Wild Turkey, I hope you watch this because thank you so much for making an incredible whiskey for six decades, which not many other people can, you know, give a testament to that level to. So thank you all for watching. That was a 10. Uh, I'm Phil. This is Whiskey Wednesday, and we'll see you all next week. Cheers.